reason that I say it was plug and play is that the float assembly is uh, when you unpackage this, it's complete just like you see it in the uh, on your uh, screen right now. Uh, so that's all complete. Uh, the pump is going to be pre-mounted uh, within that uh, sleeve and that float assembly. And it comes with 100 feet of uh, power cord. And attached to the end of that power cord was a 115 volt GFI. So like I said, that's exactly what you got when you took it out of the box. Uh, you'd float this out in the middle of the pond somewhere, anchor it down, and I'm going to go through a lot of that with you here shortly. Uh, plug it in on the shoreline somewhere, and voila, I mean, you had a nice little 15-foot fountain. And that, again, was the first model that uh, we came out with was a half 115 volt. It's still available today, uh, although I would more uh, be more inclined to reference this particular model as an entry level. Uh, because a lot has happened since we introduced this first uh, fountain pond pump uh, many, many years ago, several years ago. First of all, it started flying off the shelves because it was priced very, very competitively. When you stop and think about this category of product, all right, let's just, just, just think for yourself for a minute. If you live out in the countryside and you've got a pond out there and you would like to have a fountain, where are you going to go buy that thing? You know, that's a big question. You're not going to go to a big box store and find it uh, because they make, you know, they make maybe little tiny water features. But if you wanted a nice little robust fountain out there in the middle of that pond, where are you going to go? And so that, uh, therein lies, uh, there are companies out there that actually specialize, tend to specialize in this category of products. Uh, but one of the things that we found when we introduced this is that it was very competitively competitively priced and it started uh, flying off the shelf. So that model number, and again, it's still available today, and I'll just run you through a little model number nomenclature here so that it makes some sense to you. Let me move my dashboard out of my right-hand side of the screen to the left here real quick, just so I can see what you're seeing, because here at home, I don't have the uh, luxury of a preview slide. So anyway, FPS 0501, that was the model number. And uh, just to make some sense of that, the FPS actually stands for a uh, fountain pond system. Uh, the 05, uh, following that, was the uh, horsepower of the motor that was on the pump and uh, half horsepower. And the 01 uh, was an indication of voltage. And like I said, that very first pump that we ever introduced was a half horse, 115 volt, 100 uh, foot of power cord attached to it. It was a GFI, it was literally a plug and play. But uh, once we started to get this product out in, into the marketplace, then uh, we, we came under a lot of pressure to expand this category of products. Um, I'll talk about that here in a minute. But if we look at the way that the product's constructed, there's a float up here at the top. Uh, that's a polyethylene uh, foam-filled float. I've got a cutaway up here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, so this is, um, it's not just a hollow float, it's, it's uh, filled, it's foam filled. The purpose for that foam filling is if, you imagine this uh, being, and, and, and you know, I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but imagine this uh, being out on a, a, a country pond somewhere and, and some kid decides to take target practice someday. And so, you know, he puts a bead on that float and he starts shooting it uh, with whatever. Uh, but anyway, that you can pierce that float, you can, you know, run shells through it, and because of its uh, buoyancy and the fact that it's foam filled, yeah, you're not going to sink the thing. So uh, that's that's a that's a nice uh, feature to it. The uh, the other reason is the foam filled is that it will not waterlog, and the plastic outer casing of the float has got UV uh, inhibitors in it, so that it's uh, resistant to UV sunlight. But that's what the float looks like on the inside. And then the pump, uh, the pump that connects to it is uh, actually one of our high cap pumps. Uh, so it's gonna have a two inch discharge and it's going to, just like our high cap submersible pumps, and it's gonna have a high cap uh, impeller on the inside. These are single stage pumps, so there's only one impeller. They don't need to produce a lot of pressure, but we do want them to uh, throw a lot of water. And so. Inside that pump end is a, a high cap impeller. I think here, if you look at the, what I've got up on the screen here, I'm going to use my cursor. Um, there's a mounting flange that, that uh, 
comes right down into the center of that float. That mounting flange, as you maybe are looking at my cursor, is threaded on the bottom so that it threads right into the discharge of the pump sitting just below it. Uh, I think I've got an illustration here. So that mounting flange, um, as it uh, sits down into the inside of the float, you can see there are brass inserts up here on the top of this float. They're molded into the float itself, uh, threaded brass inserts. And so when that mounting flange comes down, it'll actually mount right into the inside of that float. Uh, it's held there with uh, uh, some stainless steel hardware into the, uh, the uh, threaded uh, bronze inserts. And that's what holds that uh, plate down. So this this plate rests on the ri a ridge that's just inside that float. You can see it here in the uh, uh, the, the diagram that I'm highlighting right now. So that plate uh, rests on that ridge, and that's what that pump hangs on. And that float is buoyant enough to keep that pump um, from submerging. And so that's uh, how that goes together right there. Um, so uh, in addition to that. Uh, Load in that pump, uh, there's an intake screen. Uh, it's a six inch slotted PVC uh, plastic pipe. And that intake screen, uh, if you look at the float, now this, uh, I've kind of drawn up this flange assembly, sits down in there, and that's the pipe that runs down to where the, uh, the discharge of the pump will uh, hook up to. But there's also a, a hub on the bottom of this float, as you can see in my diagram here. So when that plastic six inch slotted sleeve comes over the top of it. Whoops, uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, when that top plastic six inch sleeve comes over the top of it, it's held in place with uh, some stainless steel hardware. They happen to be, uh, there's actually three eye bolts that uh, thread into that hub. And that hub's also got uh, bronze inserts in it as well. So everything threads together very nice and clean. Uh, but but it is eye bolts that we're going to use up here to hold the sleeve to the float, and those eye bolts will also be used later in our installation as a way of anchoring or tethering this uh, system down. So uh, that's what the sleeve will look like. Now, in reality, uh, when this sits out in a pond, um, and, and uh, other thing I'll mention is when you unbox this system, uh, this floating fountain pond pump system, when you un unbox it, uh, there's, you've got a choice of three different uh, fountain patterns. Uh, so there's three different nozzles up here that will be included in the package. One of them is already mounted on the pump. It's a factory installed, uh, and I'll cover that here in a little bit. So one of these three will already be mounted on the pump, and the other two are going to be consumer options, uh, depending on what kind of a fountain uh, pattern uh, they would like to have. Uh, so when looking at these floating fountain pond pumps, this is something that we don't keep a secret. We need to have at least a minimum of five feet of water depth. So we can't put these in very, very shallow ponds, but we need to have at least uh, five feet of water uh, as a minimum uh, for these uh, uh, fountain pumps to, to, to float and, and function properly. And again, since I don't have my preview slides up here, there may be a little hesitation in between these. Uh, but with those eye bolts that are uh, holding that sleeve on, as you saw in the previous slide, with those eye bolts now, you can take some nylon, uh, almost like ski rope, uh, just some nylon rope, and you can either uh, anchor it or stake it uh, to the shoreline. Uh, you might want to consider taking those eye bolts and, and anchoring it to the, uh, you know, the bottom of the pond. Uh, but those eye bolts that hold that sleeve on are for that purpose. And like I mentioned earlier, there's three of them on there uh, that allow you to tether or uh, anchor this uh, this fountain pond pump. So it just doesn't migrate all over the pond as it's up and running. So you kind of want to keep it stabilized a little bit. And that's done with these uh, with this nylon rope. Now, as I mentioned, the FPS uh, 0501, uh, that, that plug and play, that was the first model that we went to market with. And as I mentioned, it was very popular because, again, these things are very competitively priced. I encourage you all to go look at those, uh, the pricing on these products. Uh, I think you're going to find it to be the same, um, very competitive. And, and with that came some additional pressure. You know, people said to me, hey, Painter, uh, you all make one that can operate off 230 volt. Well, the answer was no. We only had the one model. 
uh, the half 115. So it also answered the question if they, hey, do you make anything bigger than a half horsepower? Well, the answer back there was back in those days were no, but today uh, that's all changed. And so uh, today we've got uh, several models available. Uh, we still have this half 115 volt entry level model up here in the top right hand portion of your screen. So that's, that, that's still a, a very popular model and, and available today. But along with that, we added another uh, half horsepower model, uh, FPS 05. In this case, it's an 021 instead of an 01, and that means that pump will operate off a 230 volt. Uh, right next to it is a three quarter horse. Again, 230 volt. And to the far left is our uh, largest that we build to date is a one horse. Uh, 230 volt model and so today that product has kind of evolved to include uh, additional sizes and they all can operate at 230 volts when we look at the uh the half horsepower uh, just to give you some idea of what the physical size of these are because the, uh, the marketing pieces sometimes uh, when it shows a, an image of these or a cutaway it doesn't really give you a perspective of, of you know how how big are these things. I've walked these into supply houses and I've had people look at me and say, "Dang, I thought it was bigger than that." I've had other people say, "Wow, I thought it was smaller than that." Well, here's here's the dimensions on that half horsepower. Uh, that float is going to be about 14 and a half inches in diameter, and the overall length there is approximately I got to move my dashboard out of the way. I think that's 32 inches there. Uh, yeah, 32 inches there for that half horsepower. Uh, when we look at the three-quarter horsepower, it's going to have a little larger float on it, uh, 20 inches, and it's going to be a little longer in, in total height, uh, uh, again, because of the higher horsepower. Uh, so that three-quarter horse measures 20 by 36 inches. And then the one horsepower uh, on the far right-hand side also uses the 20-inch float, uh, but that's about 40 inches from top to bottom from the top of the float to the uh, the bottom of the motor. Uh, at the bottom, that's about 40 inches. And so um, there is a, a, a little difference in the float size as we went into the higher horsepowers, uh, but the half uh, 115 and 230 volt uh, will have a 14 and a half inch float. By the way, all these floats uh, from top to bottom are about eight inches. Well, in fact, they're all the same. There are eight inches from the top to the bottom. So the height of that float is eight inches. Uh, and the widths are displayed on your screen right there. I wanted to show this pump that, uh, again, hooks up to that uh, mounting flange that sits down on that float. So you can see as the pipe comes through the float, now it, it threads into the discharge of this uh, single stage uh, high cap pump. And again, that's a two inch uh, high cap uh, inlet and outlet, two inch uh, inlet and outlet on that high cap pump. But the reason we use the high cap impellers is because uh, when we build high cap pumps, we build those in 35, 55, or 85 gallon per minute series. And so again, we're looking for a lot of water, uh, not necessarily a lot of pressure. I'm gonna share with you about how big these fountains are as, as we uh, continue here. Uh, but that's what, how that pump's mounted. It sits on the inside of that uh, plastic sleeve. Uh, on the bottom of that sleeve, we would uh, we'll solvent weld a, uh, a uh, PVC cap. Now that cap has a hole in it that allows just the bottom portion of that motor to stick out the bottom of that sleeve. And so, as you might have seen in the previous uh, images and certainly in the, those to come, uh, you'll notice that just the bottom portion of that uh, submersible pump motor is what's uh, exiting uh, that uh, cap on the bottom of that sleeve there. So with these 230 volt models, um, and again, that's what we, we added to the half 115 that we had initially. We added a half 230 and then a three quarter and a one horse 230. But with these 230 volt models, uh, they're all gonna come with what's called a control panel. All right, so this control panel will be something that typically is mounted along the shoreline on a six by six post or a fence, or sometimes it's in, enclosed in a small utility building. Uh, but this control panel is uh, going to mount along the shoreline. And I want to tell you, inside the control panel are three basic components. Uh, three basic components. There's two timers. 
Uh, you see those pictured on your screen. So one of the timers is going to run a light kit, which I haven't talked about yet, which was also something that was asked early on. Hey, do you make them out of 230? No. Do you have a higher horsepower? No. Do you have light kits that can light them up? No. Well, that's all changed today, and all that is available as this product has evolved over the last uh, several years. And so there's two timers in there. One's a light timer. Uh, that can control the lights if you decide to put a light kit on your uh, uh, floating fountain pond pump. And the other one is a pump timer. So, you know, if you want, for example, if you wanted to pump to uh, uh, come on at 6 o'clock in the morning and go off at midnight, you could set that timer uh, that would operate that pump just that way. If you had a light kit on it and you wanted the lights to come on at, uh, I don't know, uh, six o'clock or seven o'clock in the evening and go off at midnight when the pump shuts down you can set the light timer up for that so that you're not running these consistently all the time and then again that third option or that third component that's inside that control panel is a, a 230 volt uh, ground fault interrupter and so that's already built into your control panel uh, i would tell you that once you open the uh, cover on that control panel all these components are all pre-wired uh, so the, the, the uh, two timers and the GFI are all wired into this uh, pump motor contactor here. And so what you're looking at is an installer, as the person that's going to install this is a terminal block that's very, very easy to understand. Um, so what you're basically going to have over here on the right-hand side is your incoming power. Uh, and those, those uh, that terminal block is well labeled. And then you've got two terminal blocks. One runs out to the pump and one runs out to the lights. And of course, all of it has uh, grounding uh, terminals in there as well. But it's a very, very easy control panel to wire. Uh, you're bringing power in and then you're going back out to the pump and, and, to the, uh, and to the lights. But those are what's inside that control panel. I mentioned that you get three different fountain patterns when you uh, purchase a, a flint walling floating pond pump system. And, and so here's the here's the three uh, patterns. These are uh, these, these will look like black discs, as you can see located at the top of your screen. And uh, of course, the uh, openings in the discs vary one from another. So I'm not the one that named these. However, uh, the first one over here is what's called a water lily, uh, and followed by the water trumpet, and then the last one on the far right is what we call our sky cannon. These discs. Uh, can be easily uh, removed and replaced. They all are going to be marked with a this side up, so uh, uh, be, be cognizant of that. There is an up and a down side to these, but to uh, remove or replace one of these uh, fountain pattern discs is simply uh, pulling up four uh, stainless steel cap screws or cap bolts, and uh, there's an O-ring that sits just below it, and you Pull the old one out, put the new, a different one on, and bolt it back down, and you've just changed the, the fountain pattern there. Uh, but that's what these discs look like. Um, uh, and again, there's there's three of them that come with that product. So, for example, this uh, this first one is is whoops. Uh, the first one is called the water lily. Uh, let me move my dashboard again. I'm sorry about this slight dis distraction here. All right, so yeah, the first one's called a water lily. It's, it's the one that's factory installed. So you'll get a center flume that'll go up uh, anywhere from 15 to 24 feet. That 15 would be more of a uh, an example of a half horsepower, and the 24 feet would be more uh, uh, similar to that of a one horsepower. So a fairly nice uh, tall fountain. And then of course the breadth of it, the width, uh, again, will vary from 30 feet to 46 feet. Uh, again, this is the uh, this is the, uh, the uh, fountain pattern or no, or uh, nozzle, I guess. It's factory installed, and again, depending on horsepower, that with that high cap uh, uh, single stage uh, impeller in there, that thing's going to throw anywhere from you know 80 to 100 gallon a minute, as you can see on the screen there, and that's called the water lift. Now, another option is what's called the water trumpet. Uh, it, it kind of makes more of a fanning type of uh, display. And these images, quite frankly, I took with my cell phone. So um, it'd be nice to have some professional images that I wasn't able to access from my house. So I threw these up there. Anyway, that uh, water trumpet puts out more of a fanning uh, spray. Uh, 
of 13 uh, to 22 feet in height. Um, again, that's three quarter to, to a horsepower. The width is going to be somewhere between 15 and 35 feet, again, depending on horsepower. Um, and it will throw water at 45 to 60 gallons per minute. And that one's called the uh, water trumpet. And then the last one here is referred to as the sky cannon. It's basically a, just a robust flume of water that's basically shooting straight up in the air. And uh, that's uh, water cannon is going to throw water at a rate of 70, up to upwards to 70 gallon a minute, 50, 55 gallon per minute on that half horsepower. But as you can see with the one horsepower, you can get a pretty good height on that. You're going to uh, be able to throw a flume up there a little be better than 40 feet in the air. So uh, again, these are just the three nozzles that are packaged in with the product when you get it uh, so that someone can decide which of those three patterns uh, they find uh, to be uh, most palatable. So that comes with it. The light kits, uh, there is an optional light kit that, that are available for these. Uh, it, it doesn't shift with the unit, it's an accessory, it's an adder, uh, but there is a timer already built into that control panel to operate these things. And uh, not only do we have the light kits available, but uh, again, uh, just uh, customer demand and, and customer response also prompted us to offer light kits in varying colors for seasonality. Uh, lighting up of the uh, fountain. So you, for instance, you've got some clear uh, clear LED bulbs, you've got some blue, green, and red. So you've got not only, a, a, uh, you've got a choice of colors. Uh, these pods, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor on the screen, these pods up here in the top right, uh, that in case these LED bulbs are stainless steel, um, I do know that when we launched this product some 15 years ago, we came out with pods that looked, uh, they were made out of an aluminum grade, alu uh, a, a, a marine grade aluminum. And uh, because some of the chemicals that are thrown into these ponds, uh, you know, turn them green and blue, uh, those aluminum, even a marine grade, wasn't holding up very well. So we just uh, opted to go all stainless steel with these pods up here. So when you purchase the light kit, you'll get these three pods in your selection of uh, colors. The way that the light kit mounts um, is uh, very easy. The, this is the pod down here on the bottom right. Uh, there is a, a stair step looking bracket uh, that that pod mounts to. And so uh, it'll mount to the bracket and then the bracket will mount to the top of the, of the uh, float. Uh, in a previous slide, I had tried to indicate there were several uh, um, uh, threaded uh, bronze uh, inserts in the top of that float. Uh, some of them to hold the nozzle down, some of them to hold the flange uh, plate down, and the others, there's three of them up there also for these uh, light kits. And so the light kits would mount up to the top of the float with that little uh, stair-step-shaped bra stair -step bracket off to the side. This is kind of what it would look like from a bird's eye view if you were looking down on the top of that fountain as it was floating in the water. Again, these three lights are, are there. One thing I'll say about these lights, and I'm only saying this only from a personal experience, is uh, we have a, 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 there was a church that uh, had a pond out front of it, and I drove past this church every day, going to and from uh, my office, very high traffic area. And I looked out there one day and they had a little pond pump sitting out there and this thing looked like it was kind of laying on its side. It wasn't shooting water straight up, it was kind of shooting it off at an angle and it wasn't very impressive at all. And so I just decided to make a U-turn. I saw some cars in the lot, so I walked into the church, got a hold of the pastor, said, I got a great deal for you. He said, what's that? I said, I'm gonna come over here with my son on Saturday. We're gonna yank that poor excuse you have out there for a fountain and I'm gonna put one in for you free of charge. Well, let me run this by the board of trustees. I'm thinking, dude, did you hear what I just said? Free of charge? You really need to get approval on that? But anyway, um, we put a light kit on that, that uh, uh, fountain that we put in the pond in front of this church. And we went out there at nighttime uh, we, to, to look at this thing. And, and what I want to tell you, and this is my experience, is these, this light, uh, this pod will actually pivot within that bracket. So you can turn it straight up. You can angle it out. You can angle it in. And just from personal experience, I want to tell you something. 
what a difference that can make in the way that your fountain is going to be displayed at nighttime. So you can play around with that a little bit, get the uh, the right angle on your lights that you like. Uh, but man, that can be a very very impressive uh, nighttime display. So um, again, these these light kits are they're an option, uh, but they can uh, depending on how you angle those things. Uh, you can change the colors. You can change really the appearance of the fountain at nighttime uh, with the light kits. Also, want to point out this that uh, when you put this uh, when you put this fountain uh, pond pump system out into a pond, um, again that float float is is very buoyant and and in reality uh, about maybe uh, four or five inches of that float will s sit above the water level when the fountain is idle, when it's not pumping at all. Uh, so about four or five inches of that will be above the water level. And because that floats only, you know, 14 to 20 inches in diameter, uh, it's relatively small. I've seen other fountains and my God, it looks like some kind of a robot with arms on it is out there, you know. So this has got a very low profile in a pond. Uh, we don't want them looking at the, the float. We want them watching the fountain. And when that pond pump fires up, Okay, so when that pond pump fires up and it's pushing water up out the top, again, that's an 85, anywhere from a 35 to an 85 gallon a minute impeller in there, spinning at 3,450 RPMs, uh, what will happen is once that pond, pond pump powers up, it'll, it'll sink down a little bit in the water. Uh, and, and that's preferable as well. Uh, we only expose about two inches of the top of that uh, uh, float out of the water, which also keeps your pods just above the water level. And so it's a, you know, it's, it, it, it's not an eyesore as you look out across the pond, you're not seeing this great big obstacle out there in the middle of it. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that that is a normal process that that, that pond, uh, pump system will, will sink down as that pump's pushing water up. You know, there's for every action, there's a, a reaction and so uh, there'll be a, a, a slight sinking effect and that is an absolute normal uh, operation of that pump. This pump's going to ship with a uh, instruction uh, operating manual. Uh, I want to bring this up because I do want to make sure that, that you hear this. Uh, uh, you want to read it. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. Uh, Unlike, or I should say, uh, no different than a. You go by a step ladder today, and you look at all the warnings and all the labels that we have to put on that ladder uh, to to take it to market. Uh, it's not much different. There's a lot of warnings in here regarding these floating pond pump systems. They're not supposed to be put in backyard swimming pools, um, and so just some common sense things in there as far as the warnings go. Uh, we're going to ask that when you unpack it, uh, make sure that everything's uh, intact. I mean, we're shipping this thing as a plug and play. We do a great job with the packaging. Uh, but again, uh, just take the time to uh, do that quick inspection of the packaging. Uh, make sure you select whatever fountain pattern you want so that you can make that change on the shoreline. Um, so that's also going to be in that instruction manual. Again, I mentioned the minimum depth of five feet. Uh, that's the, the depth of uh, the minimum depth of water that uh, this uh, system should be used in. Uh, there's going to be a reference there to testing the GFI, and you'll have one with both uh, the 115 volt as well as the 230 volt. Uh, but before you leave the job, you know, make sure that the uh, GFI is is functional and in working. Just a little bit of uh, due diligence. Um, with the 115 volt systems, uh, you're limited on cable length. You can go out 100 feet, and that's it. Uh, so again, these aren't designed to go way out there. Uh, but uh, the 230 volt models, you can go up to 250 feet, which is not you know, that's damn near the length of a football field, quite frankly. But uh, uh, so the 230 volt models, you can put out there a lot further uh, than the 115 volts. That's from the shoreline. Uh, maintenance. So there's a little area there in maintenance, and and not a lot of maintenance goes with these systems, quite frankly. But uh, I'm going to put my cursor back up here. That suction screen there, you know, uh, if a Walmart bag happens to get uh, sucked in around it, you might want to have to clean that off of there. Uh, 
uh, because we just these are going in not wells they're going into ponds and, and some ponds and the water's more pristine than others uh, so periodically cleaning that uh, that suction sleeve uh, would be part of the maintenance to make sure that your uh, pump is is running at, at you know full operation and then there's also a section in there that talks about winterization and how to protect these uh, systems during the winter time so with that, I'm coming down to my last two slides. I didn't figure this uh, first run on the fountain pond pump system would take a full hour, but I see that we're approaching about a half hour. Um, I've attached a handout uh, to this web conference, uh, and it's uh, one pictured on your screen, so it's in the form of a PDF. Uh, but it's there for you to download uh, if you desire, and uh, this is our marketing piece for these floating uh, fountain pond pump systems, but some of the things that are in here uh, are things uh, such as uh, uh, there's quick disconnect splice kits uh, for underwater. Uh, so we have uh, uh, splice kits that are available. Again, this this product category has kind of evolved to become you know a small family of uh, floating fountain pond pump systems. But uh, the, and then there's uh, uh, your heat shrink type splice kits, uh, additional cable links. These ship with 100 feet of cable, uh, but you can uh, get additional cable lengths for those 230 volt models in 50 foot increments. Uh, so you can get 50, 100, or 100 additional 150 foot of, of cable there. And I think with that, I'm coming down to yeah the last part of this uh, uh, this presentation today, which was again the floating fountain pond pump systems. I do appreciate everybody uh, uh, supporting these web conferences. Now I'm looking at my dashboard here. I've got somewhere between 40 and 50 people sitting in on this today. And uh, we do appreciate your investment and time. I'm going to be doing another one tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a virtual teardown of a, a centrifugal pump just to walk through how to uh, kind of rebuild the pump end and replace a mechanical shaft seal. And uh, then there's some other topics that are coming. I think I got two or three next week and a couple more the week after. And as long as this COVID thing seems to be hanging in here, I'm going to keep putting these out there. So um, uh, encourage you to go to our website and, and, and look at these. I'm also recording uh, a lot of these web conferences. So if you've got associates, partners that uh, for whatever reason haven't been able to sit in on one of these, uh, at the same homepage that you went to register for this web conference, uh, also be aware that just above that schedule is a list of archived. Uh, archive webinar recordings and so undoubtedly this will become one of those that are already up and out there uh, but with that uh, hopefully this just was kind of an introduction to our our floating fountain pond pump systems these things should be flying off the shelf uh, because they are priced competitively and they are very very durable and you know, the, the flint walling quality and that submersible pump uh, which really if you stop and think about it that's that's the bulk of this uh, whole system anyway is the pump uh, we've done a great job with that um, the biggest the biggest uh, challenge I think for you is to make that connection how do you make that connection you know to the uh, to the consumers out there that are desiring to have a system like this uh, how do we make them aware that we are a source for that? If you come up with some great ideas, I've got some I'll share on the next web conference. But anyway, uh, don't uh, hesitate to email them to me. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, web conference off. This was the last slide that was up there. And I appreciate everybody's attendance. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you back here tomorrow, uh, same time. And we'll be doing, again, the uh, centrifugal pump virtual teardown. Um, as we're approaching the weekend, have a great weekend. Be safe and hope to talk to you soon. This web conference has now ended. Thank you.